Hello, my name is Christopher McMichael, and I pastor in Tennessee, and I've been asked to address what I see as a, a misuse and a misinterpretation of Romans chapter 13 in light of our national pandemic, coronavirus, COVID-19 worldwide event. And before I address the doctrinal misuse and misinterpretation as I understand it in Romans 13, let me qualify a few things here. Let me say first and foremost that I am not a fundamentalist kook. I am not afraid of science. I'm not a science denier. I'm actually a trained geologist, and I've worked as a geologist for over 20 years now, though I pastor. I still consult in geotechnical engineering, so I'm not an anti-science nut job, all right? I believe in epidemiology and virology, and here at our church, we are doing everything we can to honor our governor's request. As a citizen of the state of Tennessee, our governor is a righteous man of God, and he just issued for our state last night a safer at home order. And my governor, and I'm thankful for a righteous governor, he said, quote, this is not a mandated shelter in place order because it remains deeply important to me to protect personal liberties. He even re listed religious institutions as, quote, essential services. And so we have a lot more freedom here in Tennessee than other states do that perhaps have a more progressive governor who is taking away civil liberties and First Amendment rights. So to answer this question here about Romans 13, let's first read it and ask ourselves what's going on and what is the, what's the precedent we're facing here in America in now April 2020. Romans 13 verse 1 says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers or the higher authorities. We agree. We believe that we ought to be submitted. For there is no authority but of God. The authorities that be are ordained of God. Now we must qualify that in that the seats of authority are what are ordained of God, not necessarily individuals. We understand that a pagan can take the, the king's chair. The pagan can become the governor. A pagan can become a prime minister who then becomes a dictator and crushes people. A pagan can take the chancellor's seat and that chancellor be named Adolf Hitler. And then we have people like uh, um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer who plotted to assassinate the chancellor. This is our history. Whosoever therefore resists the authority, resists the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves condemnation, damnation, or judgment. We have a promise in verse 2 that if we as believers do not submit to the ordained authorities, whether it be a prime minister, a president, a governor, a mayor, a police officer, or a dictator, we have a biblical promise that there will be a price to pay. We will be judged. And folks have paid that price throughout the history of the church when they refuse to submit to ordain power. But remember, the, the seat is ordained, not necessarily the use or abuse of that seat of power. In our own nation, in the 1960s, we had African Americans and whites who protested seats of authority because the rule coming from those seats was perverse. It was called segregation. And those blacks and whites who marched and protested, they were full well ready to pay the price of judgment. They went to prison. They went to jail. They were beaten. They were abused. They were hosed with fire hoses. They were, they were sicked upon by attack dogs because they protested and did not submit to unjust rules of reign. I think we understand that as Americans. That's part of our national history. Verse 3, for rulers are not a terror to good works. We should say, for rulers should not be a terror to good works. But what defines good? The Bible defines what good is. Good works includes going to church. And right now we're facing in America, there are some governors who are issuing criminal decrees that if you go to church, it's against the law now. We just had a pastor arrested yesterday for, quote, unlawful assembly. But we do have a First Amendment right to lawfully and peaceably assemble. Rulers, I'm going to add this, not perverting the scriptures, rulers should not be a terror to good works. But Paul, you know, is defining good works as what the Bible calls good works. And since when is coming to church an evil work? Rulers, we'll say, are supposed to be a terror to evil works. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the authority? Do that which is good, like go to church, and thou shalt have praise of the same. But he, excuse me, he is the minister of God to thee for good. Or we should say the seat of authority should be the minister of God to thee for good. 
But if thou do that which is evil, which apparently in some states right now includes going to church, if you do that which is evil, be afraid. And are we really living in a day now where we have a fear of assembly in the local house? Now, let me say, I understand, let me qualify this, I understand why governors and even our president have asked that we not assemble to help prohibit the spread of COVID-19. I understand that. I get virology and epidemiology and the whole theory behind it. Here's my concern as a pastor and a Bible teacher and as a citizen of the United States and a patriot. Right now, some folks are taking their, their governmental authority a little too far, I believe, and they're mandating and they're turning off re religious and civil liberties in hopes, and we hope that they'll turn it back on. And, and then what will happen is they're going to turn it back off again. And then we hope they're going to turn it back on again. And we're going to be so conditioned to turning off and turning on religious and civil liberties that we won't think anything of it when they turn it off again and never turn it back on. My interpretation, my understanding of Romans 13 is rulers are a terror to what are biblically defined as evil works, not what are biblically defined as good works. One of my congregation members asked me, when do we start the civil disobedience? And my answer has to be, when they start framing mischief with a law and they start calling evil good and good evil. At that point, we protest. At that point, we march like they did in Alabama and in Georgia during the segregation period. At that point, we protest and we stop plotting like Dietrich Bonhoeffer and others did under the Third Reich. Right now, I don't see a point to protest, not to my governor, because he's a righteous man who says, I believe in religious liberties. I'm asking you as your governor, please stay home. You are safer at home. He didn't mandate anything. And even our CDC has given recommendations. They have not mandated anything. Funny, our Federalist Republic, it is our governors who are taking away rights, not the federal courts, not, not, the, not the president. It's the governors. It's the, it's the segregation of powers that are now squeezing religious liberties out of churches and congregations. It's a wild time to be alive. We pray for our nation. We curse COVID-19. We pray that our president, we pray that the CDC has wisdom. And one last thought. You know that it's not just the church fearing freedoms and liberties right now. Let me read you this real quick. I thought I'm going to have to screen capture this because nobody will remember or believe it. This past weekend, the weekend of March 29th, the president of the United States, a Republican who Christians love, he said, I'm talking and thinking about putting a state quarantine on New York State, New Jersey, and possibly Connecticut. They asked liberal Democratic Governor Andrew Cuomo, what do you think of the president's potential quarantine on New York? And he said, Governor Cuomo said, Trump's quarantine would be, quote, a federal declaration of war and would prompt a, quote, civil war discussion. He said this, it would amount to a federal declaration of war and nobody would take it seriously. Since when does a Democratic governor look at a Republican president and say, you do what you think you want to do, and it's civil war? That's the day we live in, folks. Godspeed, seek God, find a good church, pray, and let's turn this thing around quickly in Jesus' name. Amen.